Let's make flowers inspired by the artist Takashi Murakami. On the left is one of Takashi Murakami's artworks and on the right is an example of our project inspired by him. So first, let's learn about this artist. Who is Takashi Murakami? Takashi Murakami is known for blurring the lines between fine art and commercial art. That means he's known for blurring the lines between art that you traditionally see in a museum and art that is used for material items and advertising. Let's learn a little more about him now. Growing up, Takashi Murakami was a fan of anime and manga, which are Japanese comics. He wanted to be an animator when he grew up. In college, he studied more traditional painting. As he grew into the artist that he is now, he became unhappy with modern art in Japan and he wanted to create something different. He founded the postmodern art movement, which is called Super Flat, and it refers to the flat forms in Japanese graphic art, animation, pop, and consumer culture. His art has been noted for its use of color, patterns, and designs from traditional Japanese culture that are either flat or glossy, and it's often described as being cute and psychedelic. Some of his best known patterns are smiling flowers, iconic characters, mushrooms, and skulls. In 1996, he created his own art factory where he is able to work on larger pieces of art like giant prints and sculptures. Now that we've learned about Takashi Murakami, let's go over the directions for our project inspired by him. For your supplies today, you will need a piece of paper, a pencil, an eraser, a black marker, and coloring materials. For mine, I used colored pencils and markers. First, follow along with the video to learn how to draw flowers in Takashi Murakami's style. Then, fill your paper with flowers. You need to draw at least five flowers today, but more is even better. Then outline your flowers with a black marker and color in using contrast so each flower stands out. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Before you get started, make sure you have your piece of paper, a pencil, an eraser, a black marker to outline with, and then some coloring materials. I will be using some markers and some colored pencils, but you can use any supply that you like. So we're going to start out by drawing flower shapes in the style of Takashi Murakami. I would suggest drawing with a pencil first until you get the hang of drawing the flower shape. But for the video, I will be drawing with a black marker so that you can really see what you need to draw. We're going to start out by drawing a couple circles around our paper. Some of these circles can be bigger, some of them can be smaller. So I'm drawing a bigger circle here. Then I'm going to spread my next one out. I'm not gonna put my circle really close to my last one. And here's a smaller circle and another a little bit smaller circle. I want to leave enough room between my circles for petals. So I would suggest drawing at least five different circles. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I can definitely fit more here and I can even put some off of the page. So like this one is a half circle. Here's another tinier circle, another half circle, and one more, and another one over here. Let's do another almost full circle. This isn't quite a half circle, it's a little bit more than that. And then one more circle over in this corner. Basically, we want to spread out our circles and leave enough room for petal shapes in between them. Now, we're gonna start with one of our circles and draw lines for our petals. So we're gonna draw straight lines that come out from the circle. These will be the edges of the petal shape. So I'm going around the circle, drawing straight lines. Notice that my lines start to radiate out in a circle shape. So they come out from the edge of the circle and they go out a little bit and they start to curve 
down or around the circle. Then once you've done that, you can connect them with a curved line. This is like a rainbow line. Or if you turn it upside down, it looks like a happy face. So when you're working down, it looks like a happy face. When we look at it upwards, it looks like a rainbow line. And I'm gonna do this all the way around my flower shape to make the ends of my petals. Then once you've drawn your petal shapes, you can fill in the center of your flower with the famous happy face that is seen on Takashi Murakami's flowers. So we have two ovals for the eyes, a slightly curved line for the top of the mouth, and then a big smile. The smiles on his flowers are very noticeable and give off a positive, happy feeling. We can also color in the eye shapes black. You can choose to do this later when you outline yours. When you're working on a smaller circle, your lines are going to be a little bit shorter. So remember, after the circle, you're drawing straight lines that come out from the circle for the sides of the petal. It's like they come out from the circle, like light coming out from the sun. But this isn't a sun, it's a flower. So then I need to draw the curved lines for the ends of the petal shape. And then don't forget to draw the face on the center of the flower. If you're drawing a flower that's on the edge of your paper, then you're only going to draw the lines where you have enough room. I think that's about enough for my half flower. And then I'm going to draw the curved lines for the end of the petal shape. Then when you're drawing the face, just look at how much room you have. I only had enough room for part of one eye and half of the smile. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw the rest of the petal shapes and the faces on the flowers. If you have any flowers that bump into each other, then you need to think about overlapping. So this small flower that I'm drawing is going to be behind the larger flower. So I'm only going to draw the petals that I can see. Half of the petals will be behind the petals of the larger flower. So we can see that here. So you just need to think about which one is in the front and which one is in the back. And then only draw the lines that you need. Once you finish drawing your flowers, if you drew with a pencil, make sure you outline with a black marker so that your flower shapes really pop out and show up on your paper. And then you can take an eraser and erase any extra pencil lines that are showing through your outline. And now we're ready to add color to our flowers. So I will be using some markers and some colored pencils for my flowers, but you can use any supply that you like. When we look at Takashi Murakami's work, we notice that he used a lot of bright colors, but also some versions of those colors in a lighter shade or a tint, which is a lighter version of a color, a color mixed with white. So I would suggest using some markers for some really bright, vibrant colors, and then maybe some crayons or colored pencils for lighter shades of a color. Takashi Murakami often uses rainbow colors or cool colors and warm colors mixed together, but he also thinks about making each flower stand out. So I'm thinking I'm going to make this flower be a pattern of bright rainbow colors. So I'm using my markers and then I'll pick another flower to be colored and with colored pencil in a rainbow color. And that way I'll have a brighter flower because markers are very bright. And then my flower with colored pencils will be lighter because I can shade with them and add a lighter value. But you can choose any colors that you like for your flowers. You are the artist.
Okay artists, so I am all done with my Takashi Murakami flowers. I also went ahead and colored in the center of my flower, so you can do that too. You can also choose to keep your background white so that your flowers really stand out if they have a lot of color like mine, or you can color in your background. I hope you had fun learning about the Japanese contemporary artist Takashi Murakami and creating your own art inspired by him. I can't wait to see what you create. Have fun, artist!